Hey everyone, how you doing? Uh, I'm hoping to have a couple people come on up here, uh, send out email invitations to them. Uh, you'll know them if they show up. And so, all right, so let's see who else is in here right now. All right, we got Michael58. We have Cecilia Jansen. We have Caitlin Strain. I love that last um, video, Caitlin. Caitlin. All right, and we come on, um, Michelle P. All right. Okay, so um, I don't know if anybody's having the same problem I've been having the last four days with um, YouTube. I have gotten zero zip nada notifications of anyone's live streams. Now I get notifications so far, like if I make a comment and they come at, comment back, or you guys make a comment of mine, I get an email notification. But for a, a, a video being put out there, I ain't getting nothing. Well, now I shave down here. I'm letting this uh, come on back, Cecilia. All right. So, um, so that's that's one of the things go, going on right now. So hopefully uh, we'll get some other people up in here tonight's um, live stream is dedicated to uh, Dave, aka Grumpy, at Southern Ohio Prepping. Um, and anyone else like him that is in an, in an apartment, especially one that has north facing windows. So that's what uh, this whole uh, topic here is about. And I've been doing a lot of research over the last well, four or five weeks on this, trying to find out as much information, as many plants and stuff and, that, that grow without sunlight and everything else. So Let's see what we what I came up with. Oh, one other thing I almost forgot. Um, Cecilia, in response to your comment about my wife being cute, no, nah, she's darn sexy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least in my opinion, she is. All right. So let's, uh, let's switch this around, make this a little bigger and me a little smaller. And let's take a look at some stuff here. Okay. So, um... Basically, if you have a shady space on your balcony or in a um, in a room. Okay, so Caitlin says she's not getting a lot of things. Okay, uh, Michael has one north-facing window. <laughs> That's okay, Cecilia. All right, so if you have a shady space on a balcony, um, you can utilize it by growing vegetables and herbs there. If you don't have a balcony, you just got a window that's on the north side and you're not getting hard, any any direct sunlight in it, I found some great vegetables that will grow in non-direct sunlight. So um, everywhere I checked, the four big ones of uh, leafy vegetables that grow well in shade or without direct sunlight, kale, lettuce, spinach, and Swiss chard. And then a couple others added the sorrel and mustard greens and the arugula. And then I only found one, one place that mentioned Brussels sprouts as thriving in the shade. So these are some of the ones here that, you know, most people eat and, you know, don't require direct sunlight. Granted, some of them do better in direct sunlight, but others, you know, you know, like the Brussels sprouts thrives in shade. The next thing here is that I came up with, found was root vegetables. And the, uh, since root vegetables grow beneath the soil, you know, it, you know, it, they don't require much sunlight, you know. Examples of root, uh, root vegetables that, you know, you really can, you know, do without much sunlight, carrots, radishes, uh, potatoes, beets, and ginger was mentioned a couple times. So um, basically these things, you know, they if you have them in shady area, they will grow. Uh, some of them prefer a little bit more sunlight, but in everything I was checking on, they work uh, – Pretty well in shaded areas, and you can grow them indoors in pots, um, on on a, in a north-facing window. 
Okay. Now this is one I haven't heard of a confer. I can't even pronounce it. So pardon uh, uh, my mispronunciation here. Crucifers. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Cecilia. Um, some people, some some gingers plants do love the sun. My mom had the biggest, you know, half fifty-five gallon barrel full of ginger in total shade, no direct sunlight at all, and it went was absolutely bonkers for about ten years. So it, it will, it, you know, it will do well in um, in the shade. Okay, so. Here's the information you can all, or if you, I don't know if everybody can see it, so I'll read it off real quick. The uh, cruciferous vegetables grow well without much sunlight. It is the same reason they are grown in, in, the, in winters and they are considered as healthy. Always grow these in these type of vegetables in a deep pot. They will grow healthy, but do not clutter them with plants because they need a lot of extra space for growth. So they need good root growth. Hey, Tim. We got Tim Fergal from uh, Northern Idaho or North Idaho. Quiferius. Thank you, Michael. Quiferius. All right. Everybody's putting out uh, the pronunciation. So good. Everybody else knows how to pronounce. Everyone knows how to pronounce it now. So good. Oh, we got Kathy joining us here. Hey, Kathy. Can you hear me? Are you frozen? Uh, I think she's frozen. She's not moving. All right. So why she we think we tried to get her to if she can get herself to fix them and come on up here and get moving here. Um, uh, examples of the quiferous uh, vegetables that grow without sunlight are cabbage and cauliflower. Now I've known ca cauliflower likes the shade, anyways. So, all righty. So I'm not sure what other type of coferous uh, vegetables there are that would grow well in the shade. Yeah, Kathy may need to restart and come back. Oh, there she's moving. All right, let's uh, let me take off her. Okay, you're, you're muted on your end, Kathy. You need to unmute yourself. It won't let me click the. There we go. There we go. All right. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey, great to see you. You too. Yeah. So uh, what I've been, what I covered so far, I started first letting everybody know I have not received one single video notification in the last four days. I got to go hunting for videos to watch. <laughs> oh no. And uh, there's several other people that get have told me the same thing. Uh, that they're, you know, they're. I guess we're all in, um, in uh, YouTube dungeon or something for some screwy reason, or their their stuff is just malfunctioning. Because also, when I go to click on my, I get an email back. Someone's made a comment. It says manage all comments. When I go to click on it, that page doesn't come up for me. <laughs> so it may be some problem on their side. Hopefully, and they get it fixed soon. Hello, everybody. Hey. Everybody's saying hi. Um, yep. Michelle, Michael. Sean, Tim, yeah. Lisa, hello, everybody. So, yeah. So, uh, real quick, I, I, you know, covered this. Uh, these uh, coferous type plants are two of them that were listed in all the websites I was looking at. Cruciferous. Yeah. Cruciferous. Okay. <laughs> and I went over some root vegetables here that uh, that several websites said hey, they do well in um, in in the shade. And they can grow without direct sunlight. Let me back up again one more. And then, and of course, everybody was talking about green leafy vegetables, ma mainly kale, lettuce, spinach, and Swiss chard being the ones that, hey, they can grow in the shade anywhere. They can grow in indoors with, you know, out direct sunlight. And Brussels sprouts was another one, uh, a, a website piled up. So those are the ones I've covered so far. I don't know uh, what you've grown indoors, Kathy. Um, indoors, not much. <laughs> not much. I know you got a nice, you got a nice outdoor garden. I mean, I, I really wish well, for this one would have been great if my mom was still around 
she had i built her probably so one two three four five raised planter beds each of them at least uh 15 feet long and uh one um two of them were underneath a mulberry tree and that's where she grew most of her lettuce in the summertime and then she had stuff indoors in the kitchen window which faced south and there was a big window on the north side and she had had, had stuff growing there as well so i mean she, you know my mom had so much more knowledge than i do about you know growing stuff indoors outdoors in the shade in the direct sun and everywhere else but uh she yeah she's gone on to the other side and so she's no longer has to deal with me and <laughs> and stuff now so, this is something i found out and then i looked at found this one up and maybe you can comment on some of these uh, as far as i just only found one website that listed all of these um mint um well, um, says, you know, you know, likes a shaded position. Um, I remember my mom planting hers along the, on the north side of a retaining wall. So it didn't get direct sunlight all the time. Um, do you plant mint up there? Yes, I have it actually in my main garden and I've got it um, outside in, in my, uh, on my south bed which I, I call my south bed. It's on the south side of my house. And so both of them are much in direct sunlight and they do well. I mean, they're really, they're really flourishing, but I know that they're, mint is really kind of one that you really can't kill. Yeah. <laughs> you can kind of just put it anywhere. Uh, so. uh, yeah, I know there's, there's one type of mint around here. I didn't realize it was mint growing amongst all the weeds and I went through and I dissed everything under and the first thing popped back up was the mint. <laughs> and my wife goes, that's yeah. mint, don't kill it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I think mint can grow in just about any zone, I, yeah. I believe. So it's pretty hardy and it's, um, I don't even have to mulch it or anything during the winter and it comes back. So um, yeah, it's, it does really, really well. You keep cutting it back and it grows more. Yeah. So. Now, uh, fenugreek, fenugreek, Fen fenugreek. Yeah. yeah, fenugreek. Um, I don't know much about that. Do you know anything about it? I actually tried growing it this summer, and um, my seeds did not take. They did. They. Um, I shouldn't say they didn't take. They did sprout. I I got starts of maybe two inches high or so, and I couldn't. They, for some reason, required more water than anything else, that I was doing, and they kept back. And all six plants just died off before I could transplant them. So I figured that they weren't for me. Yeah. <laughs> they were, that they were not going to be very hardy here. So, right. um, but now, yeah. Um, I kind I, I remember something about the fenugreek. Um, Howie talking about it. Oh, that's who I forgot to send an email to. Was Howie? It's how he grows a lot of stuff in his in indoors. He does. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Oh man, I, I blew that one. Should have, we should have had fun with Howie up here too. Um, Malabar spinach. It's a, I, it says it's a climbing spinach, like a vine, I guess. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, Good. and. Yes. He, so it says, it's, I mean, it says part it grows in part shade, and moist soil. Uh, you can grow in the shade year round if your climate is frost free. So my wife might try that in uh, California through the winter. I have okay. to send, uh, make sure she tries that. And then uh, bok choy. Um, I know it, uh, my daughter planted some out here. And in the spring, when it got to, when it started getting nice and warm, it went pfft, sprout. I mean, it bolted, and that was it. <laughs> I have not grown uh, bok choy before, so and I have always been wondering that. It's like we have bok choy and bok choy, and people talk about them like they're two different things, but it looks like it's exactly the same thing. I don't know. Maybe somebody else has something to say about that. Yeah. Well, as big as China is, you know, the, and you got Mandarin and Cantonese, so pronunciations and dialects all across that country, you know, you know, change the way certain things are pronounced. 
Hey, we got Steve Corsair's trainers in here. He's lurking. Yeah, he's lurking. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. And this? She hopes to try growing something on her deck. Her window in the bedroom doesn't have a sill. Living yeah. room window is your slider. Okay. Yeah. What um, my wife did on on one of the windows at, at home, she just got, got one of those little uh, wire rack ones she can pick up at uh, Sam's Club. And she put it in front of the window and she was, ha she, that's what she was uh, in the winter time. That's what she used that using that window. It was the South facing window though, for her greenhouse window indoors. Okay. So, uh, uh, Kaylin, you could, if you get uh, some sort of one of the uh, narrow racks from at Walmart or something, and that might work in your, in, in a bed by your bedroom window there, you know, put stuff on. Now this one I've never heard of before, a chameleon plant. Hmm. I have not heard of that either. And what's interesting, it says where nothing grows, the chameleon plant thrives. Wow. A, a beautiful ornamental plant is edible, is used in Vietnamese cu cuisine, grows in wet and shady spots. It is very uh, invasive, and once uh, grown in the ground, it spreads aggressively, so don't plant it. So it's better to plant it in containers only, and watch out for pieces falling off. <laughs> But uh, so you know, if that's an indoor, if you can get that to grow as an indoor plant, you know, that's yeah, you know, uh, it's ornamental and edible. And here's something I found out today: white asparagus. White asparagus is basically green asparagus. They say you cover it up with straw and stuff and put black plastic over it, so it's with a total lack of light, and it, it still grows. And it's white; it'll grow completely without. You know, like a mushroom, totally in darkness. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if, if uh, Dave and Charles like asparagus, hey, that sounds like the perfect thing for him to grow there. But, yeah, uh, put in some pots and, yeah. Yeah. In a closet. Yeah. <laughs> Just one thing, so. Oh, indirect light does not, not total darkness, but. Well, oh, it, you know, what I say is why most plants like uh, like at least some indirect. Oh. The white asparagus is grown in complete darkness. Yeah, I love on on the web page I was looking at. I, I looked it up, and it, I'll show that later here. But yeah, it's uh totally. You know, they say you know cover it with straw, you know layers of straw, you know about a foot thick or so, and then black plastic over it. Cool. Yeah. All right. So the next thing. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Um, some herbs that can be grown in, grown in shade or without direct sunlight was dill, garlic, uh, cuckoo, flower. cuckoo flower, cilantro, mm -hmm. tar tarragon, 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 chives, celery, and parsley. Okay. And when looking something else up, the um, Oh, uh, about the white asparagus, they say that it is also related to onions and garlics. Okay. Right. So you might be able to grow onions when in a little bit less uh, direct sunlight. Of course, if anybody saw my wife, the, the video I put out on my wife's uh, front yard garden thing, you know, part one yesterday. Yeah. Her onions are in, in the shade most of the time. So. Okay. So we don't need direct sunlight for a lot of those things then. Right. And you I know, got some good. These are really great to know because all through the winter, it's like, especially up here in the north, that, you know, our, the angle of the sun and how much sunlight we get, we get maybe eight hours a day or something. And the sunlight, the angle is so low that even a south facing window, it's not enough sunlight for plants to really grow and thrive you know yeah. it's it, just the strength of the sun is really really bad and it's at such an angle that the plants will all grow kind of sideways <laughs> if we need to but um so yeah, I, found, I, found that out, I found that out down in the basement with my when i was uh in my um in the little greenhouse room i built down there uh -huh. where, I had, where i had the the uh the grow lights set up some of the plants would go and they'd grow towards the light. So I kept moving the lights around. Yeah. Okay. So, and of course, the one that, that doesn't need light at all, 
is grown in caves is the mushroom. The mushroom. And um, there are several, I guess there's several ways of doing it. You know, they got these blocks you can get. I know Uncle I was talking about getting um, pieces of oak and drilling holes in it and growing it in the oak. And then um, there's, there's some regular good soil stuff you can get for mushrooms, different types. Uh, personally, I don't, I have never liked the texture of mushrooms or the flavor. I know I'm a heretic, whatever. you. <laughs> but yeah, to me, it's like, you are what you eat. I am not eating fungus. <laughs> but no, I my, my, my wife loves it. My mother loved it. No, I'm, it just didn't do didn't didn't, didn't do anything for me. But uh, no, you know. I know other people who have a hard time with mushrooms too. So you're you're not alone. But um, my my question with that is that you know you kind of like buy a kit in that way, or you know spores, and you get it going. Will it continue to self um, plant, like self spore, you know, and, and keep coming up as long as you've got the soil wet there? Um, from my under, from my understanding, anybody out there who's grown mushrooms, cor uh, correct me. You take one of one of the, one of the mushrooms and you break it apart, and that becomes your new spores. Okay. So like, like taking a potato and cutting the eyes out, and cutting it up with the eyes and stuff, okay. because you you kind of you kind you basically turn turn it upside down and you peel it back and it kind of breaks apart and you just plant each one of those little things. Okay. Because um, I've always wanted to do that, but I've never taken the step to do it. <laughs> it's yeah. like, and I love mushrooms. And I guess I thought that, you know, if I had that many like that, I wouldn't be able, especially myself, I wouldn't be able to keep up on um, on eating them all. You know, it's like, because I love them fresh and sauteed and everything. But yeah. I also now dehydrate them and can them. So that wouldn't be an issue anymore. <laughs> so yeah. I still preserve them. Um, yeah, my uh, my cousin years ago. The reason I know about turning them upside down, used to grow them in their basement, and that's how I know you turn them upside down. She's talking about how she used to do it and stuff. So, but um, for you know, I know my wife likes sneaking them and chopping them up fine and sneaking them into spaghetti sauce on me. <laughs> uh, do you notice them right away in the sauce? It depends how fastly how how finely she chop slices them and uh, them up. Okay. Yeah, and how much meat? You know, if there's a lot of ground beef in there, then they get lost in the ground beef. That's true. That's true. So, if you grind them, if you actually like put them in a food processor and just grind them up and then saute them out with the ground beef, it's almost like meat. You yeah. Know? So, uh, they actually have mushroom burgers <laughs> for the vegetarians. Yeah. But okay, yeah. I may. I just might have to spring. Sprinkler one this winter and try that. I don't know. So, yeah. yeah, the only one that I know of for sure uh, out here was is that uh, talks about growing mushrooms is Uncle Al. Okay, yes. I think Dave does at Oak Knob Farm, doesn't he? Um, Knob, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, he might. I have to go back and double check stuff. Okay. All right. Some 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 of the information that I gleaned from the websites. You know, you know. Use fresh soil for planting indoor plants. You know, don't just go out and dig out a bunch of dirt. And you want to have all your amendment amenities and stuff in there, and all you know. So it's nice, really, because basically, it that's all it has. It can't send a deep tap root down into the soil. Um, and one of the things I thought was kind of funny, you know, several mentioned, mix the manure into the soil and let it sit before planting, so that it sort of like let it breathe. <laughs> And do some stuff first, and avoid overwatering indoor plants because they don't have the sun to dry them out. Right. And um, it says you know the pots need to be kept moist, not soaking wet, for vegetables to grow without sunlight. You know, it's got to you know just you know damp. You know, so if you stick your finger. Yeah, it's it, it a little bit sticks to your finger, and you know that. But that's you know some of the information I found about it. I hope. You know, Dave's out there watching this on his phone on uh, either on this or Facebook. Right. Yeah. Um, kind of a note on winter watering, too. It's like it's going to depend on your climate and what kind of heating system you have, too. Mm. If, you're, if you're in the north and you're heating with wood and everything, it's a very dry, dry heat. And so you have to keep 
keep an eye on on the moisture level and all of those. So, you know, again, but if you're in the south, it's like probably <laughs> probably been to water once every ten days or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, it it all depends on the uh, uh, location. Oh, Blue Healer, hey, how's it going? The um, some of the things I've seen, and I covered this on a, on, a, on a live stream when Dave before Dave's computer died. There are a, a several different um, kits you can buy for watering indoor plants, and there's even and, and if you can, you get to have those um, moisture uh, sensors. You can just stick in there, and it, and it tells you what the moisture reading is all the time. Okay, let's see what else I got coming up here. Uh, oh. Hello, Pretty Garden. How are you, Blue Healer? Hello. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, and that's it. This is the thing. Besides, you know, if you if you don't have light, and they need some sort of light, they, if you get indirect light, but they need something a little bit more, there's you know you can grow all, you can grow all sorts of little herbs and stuff and sprouts using the um, the grow lights. And there's a bunch of different ones available out there. I saw, I put this one first because I thought this was cute. It is. Are those those plugs that you have to like buy certain things for to, to keep them going? Or um, I'm or not sure. Okay. Um, I, it, it, it could be just that it's a, um, like a little uh, screen in there and you use water and they all get watered the same or whatever. I've seen different types of things. Okay. But um, one of the things that I was using was the LED grow light, the uh, balanced spectrum. And I okay. got got mine off of Amazon and they're about eight, eight to 10 bucks, depending on fluctuation of um, prices. Hey, Liberty Garden. Hey, I how's it going? I didn't know they had those. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Amazon, ha Amazon has them and even Home Depot has them that you can order. And, and Home Depot has a bunch of, has the, um, um, the FET brand, F I E T, I think it is. But it's on the, it's on their, uh, their website. But like, um, if you, if you got Amazon Prime, just go look at Amazon. You can find all separate different ones. Um, the one I got, this is a uh, nine watts. Is all it takes. Now, some of the other ones I got and used was the Phillips ones, the incandescent ones. Yeah, it's a uh, 75 watt, but it produces heat because the basement was a little cold, cold down there. So I want to supplement a little heat on some of the plants to get get them going. And what's funny is they really went after the this light. They grew in the direction of the of the uh, the incandescent uh, grow light because of the warmth, I guess. Okay. Now I have a question with those lights. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you plug them into? For, for your setup, I mean, what do you set up to be able to screw them into? Uh, what I used was um, uh, the work lights that have the clamp on it you know, and the shroud around it, so you can clamp okay. it. Yeah, and since the uh, in the basement, it's I got the wrap, I got the floor joist above me, so I was just clamping it to the floor joist. Okay. Or uh, on on the shelves, I had some clamped to the shelves and, and uh, zip tied to the sh to the wire shelf so they wouldn't fall off the from the shelves underneath. Okay. Um, the, um, both Home Depot and Lowe's have the, um, the clamp ones, but Lowe's have the ones that are rated up to 150 Watts for their, for the things. The, uh, the ones at, uh, Home Depot go up to set only, they only say only go a 75 watt bulb, no brighter. The ones at Lowe's say on it, 120 Watts, 120 volts. So. I can. I, I do have. I do have a couple hundred watt ones down there as well, but that gets expensive. Yeah. But the L, this this LED um, light here, I ordered a six pack of these, um, because it went on sale after summer started. Because everybody, everybody was all done with their greenhouses and stuff, so the price dropped, and it dropped substantially. So I got six of them, you know, at a steal. Hey, Howie. There he is. There he is. Uh, let me get do something here. All right. So 
be. Fun. Hey, Lisa Lee. Oh, that'd be good. Narrowway Farm. Hey. Hi, Howie. All right, Howie. Um, I'm giving you a link there, Howie, in the chat to come on up here and talk about your indoor stuff that doesn't have direct sunlight. Because I know in some of the pictures you have stuff in, indoors that are just all over the place. And let's see. I found this not, nice drawing. And it's, it's so you people know what direct, uh, direct sunlight is, bright indirect sunlight. You know, where it's, you know, medium light, medium light, low light, low light. And so, you know, if you have a, um, a south facing one, you're going to get light come in. If it's a north facing window, you're not going to have too much direct sunlight coming in because the sun is generally either straight above or slightly to the, uh, um, uh, a south. Unless, of course, you're down on the equator, then in wintertime, hey, it is coming in <laughs> like it's a south-facing window, even though it's facing north. Okay, Howie's going to come up here in a couple minutes. Now, one of the other... Now, I found some cool pictures of people's gardens here. I mean, indoor gardens. So, you know, they got their bookshelves there and stuff. They got some plants in, the, in over by the window getting some sunlight. And they got these other here on the left-hand side here. And on the right, which are getting no direct sunlight, and they're nice and green and, you know, look healthy. Probably, you know, the kind of plant that needs that particular kind of light, right? Yeah. And so and that's why I tried listing all those plants that could could grow in these type circumstances. And you see it, they got their they got their sun garden out there and they got part of it shaded. And then they got the shade here where they got other plants growing in the heavy shade that's nice and <laughs> this one i, I like because she's got whoever this is she's she's got plants everywhere over by the sink stuff hanging down everywhere she's got plants growing and um the caption said north facing window on this picture okay so you know a lot of indirect sunlight there is so. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> yeah, she's got, there's your, the windows way over there and she's got stuff pots up on top of the, the cabinet here on top of the refrigerator. She's got stuff up in the ceiling, hanging from the ceiling up here. She's got plants everywhere and a lot of them, uh, here's Howie. And a lot of these plants here have no direct sunlight at all. You could make like a, a living wall, you know, just have the plants come down, have a whole wall of just plants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that was that was one of the uh, actually a couple of um, live streams back. I guess about oh, I guess it's been about a month now when Dave was on here. We had uh, I showed a picture of a living wall someone did in their house. Hey, Howie, how's it going? Oh, you're muted, Howie. You got to unmute. There we go. <laughs> I, I got it. I was dealing with. I had two dinner get yes. We had we had cooked a sockeye salmon on the barbecue. That I salted Ooh. the salmon. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. it's nice. So we ate all vegetables from the garden, broad beans and carrots, and that kind of thing. And squash. I grew the zucchini. We mm -hmm. roasted that, and uh, we the the sockeye. I cleaned the uh, cleaned it and salted it for two days and then froze it, so it's very really fresh when you eat it. You know, this All is right. great indoor how, gardening. Yeah, how rewarding! Uh, how rewarding! Yeah, very rewarding. Yeah, yeah, it's the best. You know, you're eating really good food and and you know it's not processed and. Yep. Yeah. So Howie, what what plants? What edible plants do you grow indoors? Well, I, I grow a few things, but I'm really stepping it up a notch. I'm doing microgreens pretty quick here. I picked up a couple of LEDs from a big box store. So I'm just going to, I don't like using artificial light. I like, I like, I like the real sunlight, but on a spectrum, like, you know, for the, the microgreens, you need coolness and stuff. So coming up with this winter by a by the window, I have a large window here. So I'm going to be doing microgreens. So it's going to be a lot of fun. 
just do trays of them. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll be putting out videos on it. That's for sure. Today has been a busy day, I'll tell you. Oh, I went, I went foraging this morning. Cool. I went to all the different trees. I know all the forested areas where the old villages were. And I videotaped all the, uh, these trees no one's looking after and they're loaded. They're loaded with plums and apples and pears. And, hey, yeah. homesteading, uh, engraving business life. Hey, Matt and Sarah, how are you? Yeah. So, uh, Howie, that big window, is it a south-facing window, east, north? It's, a, it's an east-facing window with southern exposure. Mm -hmm. And then I have another western window. And uh, I have things growing inside, like in the skylight areas, like lemon trees and stuff like that. And avocado. I have avocado growing inside and bananas, too. Hey, there, there you go, guys. Stuff yeah. that grow inside. Avocado and bananas don't like direct sunlight. They don't like it at all. They like a nice filtered sunlight with a little bit of shade. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why you see avocado farmers in California. They plant their avocados and they grow really, really fast and well. But then when the sun hits them all, it fries them. So they put up shade cloths and stuff. Yeah. And the ones that don't put up the shade cloth, they, they get the they get the avocados that are on the inside of the tree that, because the outside's all burnt. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Will, just in time, prepping's in the house. Oh, good. Have a good day. Yeah. But any microgreens is really good to grow inside your house for a nutrient value. Whoa. Yeah, got a little echo there. Whoa. Whoa. It's not on my end. One, two, three. Not mine. Okay. All right. I guess it, whatever it was. No, nope, I, I, I think it was just a glitch. It just came and went. It was gurgling like I'm like, oh, my God. It sounds like a monster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so how you see this picture up here? How do you nice. like that for, that for an indoor garden? <laughs> Well, as long as it's edible, you know, I, yeah. I, I only tend to grow things that are edible or medicinal. Yeah. Uh, ornamental's not really on my agenda, but I, I have been known to like a tree or a plant that's ornamental, but I'm not, I wouldn't go out of my way to purchase it. I, I, I want, I want something that I can use. All right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so for especially, you know, the reason, like I said in the beginning, that one of the reasons why I'm doing this topic is for people like Dave at Southern Ohio Prepping. He All he has is north-facing windows in his apartment. Terrible. No sun at all. No sun at all. And there's some trees out there, too. So, he, he what light he gets, he says he gets very little direct, you know, very he gets light, but not no direct sunlight. Get and a couple so, of LEDs. They're, they're really cheap to run. Yeah. And uh, they're a bit expensive to buy. They're anywhere between 100 and 200 dollars a pop maybe even higher if you're you know okay. you're getting a one you can dial into the spectrum you want yeah. with dave spectrum there with no light i mean he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna need some leds to the, yeah. the best thing for him to do is grow microgreens and anybody else too and and you're gonna see a healthy healthier human and it's fairly reasonably priced to do so yeah. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run backwards here real quick here. Oh, Kathy was gonna say something. Okay. Um, Gil, Liberty Garden put up a good um, point too about having mirrors around to yeah. help reflect that light and get more light in a room too. Yeah. So that's really All right, this mirrors. Is yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Put lots of mirrors everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So th this here is a as a GE LED balanced spectrum uh, grow light. And this is what I got off of Amazon for Amazon for about um, I think it was about seven to eight dollars, and I had several of those, and then I had several of these uh, incandescent ones, which you know, unfortunately they suck the juice. Yeah, they, they cost watts. But they uh, provided more. You know, like the this one was eight watts. This one's seventy-five watts, and but it yeah. just provided down in the basement. This provided uh, a little heat for my. Seedlings, seedlings to start. For now, sure. I picked up uh, six of these for hundred for hundred dollars total. Actually, it was ninety. It was ninety four dollars, and then uh, uh, state tax, so it was almost a hundred dollars. 
and there's six of these, and it's 284 watts total. Wow. And so that's what my daughter and I are going to try this winter. Nice. You're going to grow microgreens with that? Um, no, we're going to grow... Um, uh, she's out uh, um spinach kale we're all uh, oh, the cool winter time yeah and yeah and we're gonna Cold grow that crop. down in down in the basement sure and sure. so hi how are you so we're gonna be doing that there rustic traditions hello yep hey rustic hey morris patch of heaven homestead all right so um yeah, yeah, rustic traditions. We have the opposite issue. We need less sunlight. Well, here's a picture for you, uh, rustic traditions. See how they put it, the, an, an arbor up and then shade cloth over it to shade their part of their garden that doesn't need the shade? Because uh, that's you know, some uh, things some do. My, I was talking earlier about my mom's garden she had. She had a big mulberry tree and had me build three raised planter. Well, two, two that were totally under it. One was partially under it. Right. Raised planter beds. And she, she grew her lettuces in in those beds, and then on the by the back porch where I built a big huge overhang, and where uh, that was covering the back porch a little bit beyond it, and where it went beyond it is where she had her uh, a fifty half fifty five gallon barrel cut in half, you know, that was had ginger in it. Nice. And, and so the ginger loved it there. It didn't like being it didn't grow as well out in full sun, but it would do it. It, it would catch the early couple morning hours of sun. And to be in shade the rest of the day. Right, right. And uh, now, you know, any type of any type of shelves you can put up, or or any type of thing around a window, would, works great for putting stuff on. But this, you know, this is what I started over in the beginning. I'm just going to review every but everything here. Um, I got one to add to this. I forgot. Okay, so the green leafy ones that everybody was talking about mainly was kale, lettuce. Uh, spinach and Swiss chard. Uh, a couple others talked about arugula, uh, mustard greens, and then Brussels sprouts being uh, uh, thriving in the shade. Yeah. Dill, garlic, cuckoo flower. I'm going to mispronounce it again. Cilantro. Cilantro, tarragon, chives, celery, and parsley um, do not need direct sunlight. They can do indirect sunlight. That's right. And uh, cabbage and cauliflower, same thing. Um, they're but they need to have a deep pot because they're gonna need a lot of root uh, space to grow. Yeah. And they say carrots, radish, potatoes, beets, ginger, you know, root crops, something else that can do well without direct sunlight. I would say cabbage and cauliflower too, also a, a wider pot because otherwise it's gonna be so big it'll just topple over that pot, even ah. if it's deep. So. Um, yeah, deep and wide <laughs> in that way. Would collard work? Collard yeah, uh, could grow anywhere. Yeah. Okay. As long as it's cold. Okay. Cold weather crops are coming up. Start planting stuff now. Even direct sow most of what you see on this screen here. Yeah. You can direct sow that for a crop. It's getting a little late, but it still can be done. All right, That's Howie. Cool. Question for you specifically. Um, sun chokes. Do they have to be out in the sun or can they be in the shade under trees? They'll grow anywhere. Anywhere? Yeah. They'll grow in really the worst soil that you have. They'll grow in wood chips, be prolific. But the great thing about sun chokes, you know what I like about them? is their nutritional value. You have to be a chef almost to utilize sun chokes because if you don't, there's a there's problems with them. You, have, you, you know, it's a... Once it's cold for at least minimum of two, three weeks, then you can use the sun choke. But if you use it before, then there's a lot of gas. And some people that have like colitis or something, you got to really be careful. Really, really be careful. But it really likes, it's full of, um, it's full of inulin. So it brings down your sugar level. Uh, it's, a, it's a soluble fiber that grabs sugar. So, but I really like sun chokes. There's other ones like sun chokes too that are not sun chokes like, there's quite a few underground food. I really adore underground food because it's always there when you need it, especially yeah. here on the in the Pacific Northwest. You know, it doesn't really freeze a whole lot here. Yeah. So you're easily access to your food all the time. Yeah, so, I, I cannot access it here. 
very easily in the winter. So. Yeah. So Howie, would uh, sunchokes be something that I might want to try indoors down in the basement there? No. No, no, no. Just grow them outside. They'll, they look after themselves. You don't need to look. The great thing about sunchokes is they look after themselves. They might need a little bit of water in August and September. And and in, and in late September is actually when the, the tuber it shows up. It's tu tuberosa helianthus is the Latin name for sunchokes. And they, they are tuber, and they're from the sunflower family, helianthus. And uh, treat them like that. Okay. Treat, treat them like that and and the big thing is if you're in a cold zone where you are growing sunchokes dig them up and put them in your in underneath your house in a, like a, a cooler or something with hole in it like mm -hmm. a little, lid lifted a little bit so the air can come and go so they don't build up moisture and uh, they can be stored quite well in any celery cellar cool. yeah cool. yeah they're very and pickles pickle them they're great fermented mm, okay Relish make great relish, uh -huh. and then let's see. Some of the other stuff we talked about was mint. Uh, mint is good for where you are because that'll keep ticks away from your house. And a lot of people get a little grumpy because it's it's invasive. I don't even like to use the word, but you know what? I'd rather have a big patch of mint than ticks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> The mint yeah. also, peppermint also keeps the snakes away from your house, too. Rats, too. They don't like oh, it. Yeah. It okay. balances the land. Yep. Yeah. Really does. And yeah. I have I have five types of mints, spearmints, chocolate mints, orange mint. I got a bunch of different mint, and I love it because simple fact that if I got a little tummy ache and I got a little bad digestion, I'll just go make a cup of mint tea. I feel better. Yeah. Um. Something just popped in my in, into my mind here when you were mentioning about how mint keeps away uh, rodents and stuff. Uh, one of the things that I was I'd re read on is the plant with mint is lemongrass because the two of them together will keep away not only the rodents but also uh, uh, keep away um, certain type of um, mud wasps, mud daubers, and stuff from building it. Like you plant you. You put them in pots near your electrical box. They won't be attacking your electrical box like wasps for some reason like to do. Uh, now, oh, Howie, have you heard of this one? Malabar spinach. Yeah. Yeah. I just, oh, I just I thought that growing. It, 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 they say it grows like a vine. Yeah. Yep. It, it, it comes back by itself, too. It doesn't die here. It just cool. keeps growing. Yeah. And then the other one, you know, of course, bok choy. But then the other one I'd never heard of before was chameleon plant. And they say that one needs anywhere. Well, they say where a lot of stuff won't grow because there's not enough sunlight, the chameleon plant will grow. Yeah. And, and of course, mushrooms grow without light. And then something else I um, came across here was um, white asparagus is growing. Nice in complete darkness they say you plant your asparagus pile your uh straw up around it and stuff and put black plastic over it so no light gets to it and hey, uh, it doesn't like sunlight either yeah and i think let's see okay that's that so let me take this out and drop this down mm, and the white asparagus um yeah i mean this is yeah you know, i hadn't heard of white asparagus before but yeah, I have. I've eaten that before. It's good. Yeah. And yeah, it says it's um, where's it here? Flower range and asparagus. It's in the same species, same species as onions and garlic. And Allium. so, yeah. So I brought that up, but uh, yeah. What I what I Google for a lot of information here. I just Googled was um, go back here. What edible plants grow without sunlight? And uh, there is a book out there, 20 Plants That Grow Without Sunlight, uh, 30 Vegetables That Don't Mind Shade. Mm. So there's a bu bunch of different books here on it talk about uh, plants and stuff that grow um, without, um, Excuse me. without uh, su uh, sunlight. And here's, here's talking about the asparagus, but then, you know, they also have a little chart here. It tells you... You know, you know, 
uh, hours, you know, average hours required for certain plants, you know, for uh, stuff. But, you know, the, the stuff that re um, requires the least amount of sunlight, Swiss chard, lettuce, parsley, arugula, Asian greens. So, yeah, they love partial sunlight to shade. Blueberry yeah. bushes are like that too. They 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 don't they'll grow in sh shade. Yeah, blueberry yeah. in shade. I yeah, better blueberries. Tell my, I better tell my wife because if, if, if you saw my video uh, yesterday on uh, my wife did a garden tour of, of the house in California. She yeah, what blueberry. That. She put the blueberry pots out there in the sun. So I tell her she needs to put those in the shade. Yeah, yeah. Best to plant blueberry bushes too. They, they really require a lot of care in a potter. They're yeah. water lovers and acidic lovers. They really like peat moss. That's what they're in, 100% peat moss. Yeah. Yeah, they love peat moss. If you don't have peat moss, one-year-old, uh, you know, conifer tree that's, yeah. that's been outside for a year, that will do it too. All right. So, yeah, so people have uh, you know, windows and stuff. Got a bunch of pictures here of different stuff. Uh Different ways of planting stuff with windows and shade. Um, so nice. There's, you know, you have my attention. Since you said plant, I'm like, oh, I'm a savant of plants. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that, yeah, you, you just just Google this one here. This here was I just Googled for you know, indoor north facing garden, and so it you know shows all sorts of stuff that you can grow, and. Um, and most of the stuff they're showing here are is without grow lights at all for nice. these north, north facing windows. I like natural light over anything man made. Yeah. I just but, love it. But I mean, poor Dave. I mean, his apartment, his north facing window has Dave a big shade, tr shade tree over it as well. <laughs> so it's like he needs to have some, you know, like saying, you know, he do, does the like the, um, the microgreens and the sprouts and stuff where you have the little yeah. uh, grow light. Is something Dave's probably going to have to do. But I don't know if Dave likes the mushrooms. If he likes mushrooms, he's, he's set. The mushrooms and the white asparagus, he should be able to grow that stuff good. Yeah. There. Um, I know somebody who lives in Wyoming, so in the mountains and kind of northern and everything. And he, in, in a very, very small house, I mean, it's like a 400 square foot house or something. Wow. But he set up, he uh, took cardboard boxes and made kind of this. <laughs> um, like a three foot cube type of um, little grow center. He lined it with aluminum foil and then put some lights in there and then got some racks from like old um, uh, refrigerator shelving and stuff like that. And just set up like this little greenhouse. Wonderful. That he could set on, on a table or a shelf and it's all enclosed and things grew fabulously. So nice. you know, if you took a couple big boxes or, you know, go get a refrigerator box or something, you know, that, that you can take and line and create your own little growing center in there. And mm -hmm. create your climate. Like, yep. If you have like a four by four foot, foot, you know, area somewhere in the corner of a room or, um, you know, closet or something like that, you can actually create a, a nice growing space in there if you put some lights and everything. So there's a lot of things we can do to get really creative and, um, Imagination's okay. everything when you're when you're growing food. What right. can you imagine and dream up and then go for it? And you can do things with very, very little cost. You know, it's like a few rolls of aluminum foil, you know, or a free box and dig mm -hmm. around with some other things. So um, yeah, even as grow trays were just like, um, you know, um, like the containers that mushrooms would come in, you know, just different things that you would normally – recycle or throw away or something he used those as uh, his grow trays so yeah grow, growing in the winter time is a challenge yeah, it, yeah. you know in the northern uh, hemisphere uh, i watched a video once uh jeff lawton uh, he, he he went to see some people in edmonton or calgary i can't remember and they're growing tomatoes all year round in a hoop house in a rocket stove wow. all year yeah, all year round they had tomatoes. So yeah. Jeff Watton came from um, came from um, I think it's Egypt or Lebanon, and he came here and he he did a video with the guy because he was impressed with him that he could grow tomatoes all year round, and in Alberta of all places.
but that willow willow peanut that, that, that really works for northern hemisphere rocket stoves are really can you know you don't need wood you can burn up your junk mail and heat, heat the place <laughs> you know there's a lot of newspaper around and junk mail but i mean there's twigs around and people cutting trees down all the time you planned a little bit you could have your 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 all all year round your subtropical to tropical plants mm -hmm. the biggest concern is if you don't have a cob oven that that can heat the soil somehow you know like you want to go cheaply like well, as soon as you plug something in like a heating pad to heat the soil or something you're you're running into money yeah so if you if you can direct from your rocket stove somehow or your or your cob oven to heat your hoop house and uh, I know a guy that's doing that right now, and uh, he's doing his own video. I, I'm not allowed to videotape. He's doing his own. I'm like, oh, man, come on, let me videotape it. And he's like, no, no, because he's doing it for himself, too. So, yeah. so but the, you want to look at cheap resources that gives you the most bang for no money <laughs> to are growing in the wintertime. Talking about the um, the rocket stoves, Have you, uh, there's a, a, a fire uh, pit. Uh, design called the Dakota fire pit yeah where you dig a hole down dig another hole down and you dig a an angle across right. one to the other you build your fire in the deep one the draw and, you want that draw. draw through well a, vi a version of that is if you get some just your just some of the um uh single wall um hot, hot water heater ducting and you know, stuff you know some four inch or six inch just yep. put that in the ground and make a long Dakota fire pit. So yeah. You hit, build it on one side and let it draw all the way through and up the other side. It warms everything. Yeah. 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 They make benches with a cob oven that you heat the bench in the cob house. So when you sit on the, like your couch, you're sitting on the uh, heated <laughs> bench. Yeah. So I, I went, I went, I went to an eco village where they had that and I sat on it. It was amazing. They had it, they had it sheened with a, with a linseed oil. Mm. But when you sat on it a little bit and on your clothing, you know, but it was so nice on my back. I was like, oh, I could stay here forever. I looked at 27 cob houses that were built of all different kinds. So I, I paid I paid for a guide to go bring me through. So and then they brought us to the hall and fed us with the payment of the guide. Even I was just like, "Wow!" And and it was really worth it. We weren't allowed to have our cameras there, though. We couldn't take out our cell phone and take a picture. Even they are didn't allow. Are you thinking of doing a cob house, Howie? It's a possibility, but not here. It would be like in Mexico or something, <laughs> somewhere where you don't have to have so many you know so many rules to follow because i just yeah. want to build it way nature would intend it to be built not the way a man would have it like a geodesic or something like that because geodesic came from buckminster fuller and i remember reading memoirs that albert einstein used to poke fun at buckminster fuller because he knew that what bucky was up to was to put 40 years on every human's back for the bank, right? Because of the geodesic housing. Yeah. That's, that's what happened there. So so I, I really enjoyed reading both memoirs of both of those great guys. And I'm not poking any fun at Buckminster Fuller, but geodesic housing is crap. Yeah. <laughs> I said a bad word, yay. <laughs> Bill, here's some of your uh, cob house heating stuff here. Oh yeah, there it is. See, doesn't that look like nature? Yeah, very warm. Hey, all, yeah, all sorts of different ones. Seeing the you know the, the bench that goes through it. And, wow! Yeah. I've and all all I did was just uh, I looked up cob house heating. Isn't uh, that nice? Look oh, at yeah. that. That's and very this. old. That that's the way it used to be. Like the yeah. old Saudis, the old cob houses and cob ovens in Europe. You can yeah. go to a cob house in Europe that's a thousand years old, eh? They last these, a thousand years. See. Yeah, these two pictures here are just different angles of the same. You know, there's your stove there. There is just different angles. That's gorgeous. The same, same one. So there's the one view. There's the yeah, other view. The interesting thing is 
This house costs less than $50,000 to build. If you build a geodesic house, it's half million. Yeah. See, because this house that's built here was built from materials that was on the land when they showed up. That's the whole yeah. idea of building a cob house because there's only a few ingredients in cob, clay, sand, water, uh, and, and, and hay. Oh, I bought some hay today for making a cob oven. I just bought it and put it away. I want a cob oven out here because I'm tired. I'm tired of cooking uh, over here on all these different things that we have. All these, you know, barbecues to burners. And I just want a cob oven because I like cob oven bread. We baked bread today. We made rye bread. We made probably three, three loaves of really big rye bread, light rye. And uh, we did some canning. We canned 20 jars of apples, uh, apple um, sauce. Uh, I like to keep canning when it's available, anything, or make something from nothing. That's, that's sustainable when you make something from nothing because nobody was doing it. And uh, it's very interesting, Cobb. Cobb is uh, the best, the best uh, choice now for millennials because millennials have no money, and um, and well, they don't. And and uh, and but the, for fifty thousand dollars, you can build a, a nice Cobb house, a fairly, and that's not a tiny Cobb home either. That's a fairly good, and and fifty for fifty grand. I know people. This one guy. For five thousand bucks, he locked up his cob house. Okay, I mean he was frugal. I'll admit, the guy ate rice every day. <laughs> he was very frugal, but for five grand, he built his tiny cob house, had it all rigged up and inspected by the town, and it passed. It was an unincorporated town, not far from here. And another guy built up in the Highlands, he spent $110,000 on a Cobb mansion. And, and uh, I was talking to him and he says, well, for 20 bucks, he says, I'll take you for a tour. So I'm going <laughs> to go and have a look. And that's what he charges is $20. And every Saturday now till the rainy season starts, um, he, he's going to be taking people on tour. The whole thing about a Cobb house, there's one thing, you, the main thing you must remember is never to get water on it. And that's an interesting th thing to, to look at because the Cobb has to be stretched over the Cobb wall by three, four feet. So the rain never hits the Cobb wall. It hits your living roof and comes to a rain cistern or barrel, you see. Yeah. And, and the price from a half a million to fifty thousand dollars for a modern home is that that's a that's that's like twenty years off your working life that you don't have to give up. Hey, that yoke's not there. The the land is what's costing money. Yeah. yeah to answer Liberty Garden's question yeah. here, um, so uh, basically, um, let me throw this picture back up here. If you notice on some on some some of these uh, pictures here, the it still has beautiful. Hey, look at that! Still has beams and stuff in here. Oh yeah, but the wa the walls are thick. The wall is basically think clay brick being being. Well, uh, inside them they can have hay or or rammed earth hay. Yeah, the, the cob's actually on the outside. Now yeah. there's several ways to build with that. Like you said, you can build straight straight cob but you're going to have to have a lot of clay and a lot of sand and yeah. you, you want to offset it but you see your beams there and your gables are all going cross there that's yeah. fantastic who wouldn't want to live there you're cooking your food there it's heating your house there and you didn't have to work 25 years to own it i'll yeah. take it all day long the biggest thing is is improperly built cob you don't want to see it. It's a crumbly mess. Yeah. The first, take a course on it. Go and participate. Volunteer and watch how it's done. How there's not too much moisture. How it's not being built in the super heat. There's cooling times. There's a little bit of finesse. But if a guy wanted to dig a cave and then cob it all up and throw a rocket stove in or a cob oven and live there, I mean, it wouldn't cost you any money. That's what people did back in the day. Like the, the, the people that came from Europe to North America, they didn't have a house, you know. They didn't have anything. So they built these things called Saudis. 
and yeah. it, and and mm -hmm. and Cobb House. That's what was built. There are yeah. there's a house here where I live that's guaranteed to last a million years, and it's built on top of a spring from rock. Yeah. Your mortgage and housing corporation should take note of that one. <laughs> yeah, the um, one of the things the, uh, the the pioneers coming across the plains used to do, um, they'd take the, the buffalo grass mm -hmm. and they would cut big squares and lay it like brick. Yeah, to build to build their uh, houses. And once they did, they'd, they'd, you know, they'd build the walls and stuff, and then they put a roof on it. And they would lay the, you know, the um, you know, they'd be cutting it about, you know, a foot thick or so, and it yeah. would lay the do the whole roof that way as well, and that way even when it rained, because the, you know, the the buffalo grass when it root starts rooting, regrowing and rooting together, that stuff is tough and hard. I mean, it's you know, I had to get a dozer to tear out the you know, to, you know, I do work wow. out here where they had made um, berms for the irrigation di ditches out in the field here to level it out where I could actually use the field again. Yeah. That yeah. stuff was so tough. Oh, Question for you, too. Um, for a cob house, uh, because almost every climate that you're going to be in, there's going to be rain at some point, even if you're in the desert. Um, is there, can you build it and then have some other kind of siding on the outside and, and everything? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. more like you can do your walls and everything are all You can do whatever you want with your okay. earth ship. Yeah. <laughs> that's basically okay. what it is. I've seen I've seen somewhere they've you know they built it into a bank and come had the roof come off the bank and then they for they did their walls with the bales of straw and, and did everything on it and then on the outside of it took old tires and Put yeah. the tires there and pack the dirt in the tires so the tires act as, 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 as a um, rain break. I've oh, also yeah. seen I've also seen them. I can't find it right now. Uh, where someone took they recycled. I've seen several different examples. One where they did, took soda cans and just yeah. bordered soda cans along the, on the outside or bottles. Yeah, and then you have uh, and then bottles, glass bottles, and yeah. soda bottles. You want to if you're going to build something like that, you you, you still want to go with the mortgage and housing corporations. You want them to recognize it. And one of the ladies that I went and visited her place, she had, she had almost thirty cob houses there. There was two or three under construction, and the mortgage and housing corporations, they have to approve you. And each place that you will live is, will be different, but it's it's no good to go and, and build a cob house and then because it, it doesn't work that way. You have to have you have to have it inspected. And there's two biggie things that's going to be inspected. Okay, one is your where's your sewage going? Okay, and the other is electrical. That's mm -hmm. the two biggest things that's going to come down to being accepted or not so if you've got someone that's that that's putting in a biodigester well that's acceptable in some counties in the united states and then some municipalities here but then some are not so you really have to do your your homework because you don't want to put in some money and time and then someone says hey, well we're here with the bulldozer and the law and the bylaw officer and there's nothing you can do about it it's a cry and shame i've seen it but you 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 make your way, but you make sure the electrical is inspected and the septic or 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 oh, biodigester, whatever you're doing, yeah. it has to be accepted. Yeah. As far as the electrical goes, on some of them, uh, most counties, most only all, most counties only inspect 110 volt. They don't inspect yeah. all volt. That's that's the same here. So yeah. if you're running running a solar 12 volt LED lighting system, yeah, they don't get to inspect it. If you're and trying to borrow some money against the against it, you certainly will have to have it inspected. Yeah, or you can't you can't throw it now as an asset. That look, I want to borrow fifty grand, or I want to borrow a hundred thousand dollars, or I want that gold card. You really have to watch your that you are all above board. What's this? Are they this, smashed cans? This is smashed cans. They're putting them up like shingles. Wow. Over the tar paper. Wow. That's now, see, 
What's the R value on that? That's what you got to look at, right? I'm, I'm not sure, but it probably has just you know your your regular walls inside. But yeah. Doing this as the uh, the siding on the outside, so it's going probably going to add some more R value just because the cans are always going to have some air in there that aren't isn't going to be um, exchanging heat much. But that's uh, that was one 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 cute picture I just saw here. And then they're, uh, yeah, and see, so see, they got, you know, the smash cans, they're using them like sh the old fashioned sh scallop shingles. And then they got the, uh, where do you come up with this stuff? I don't get this stuff on my computer. <laughs> like, oh, come on. Here's what I looked up. This is Google soda can house. And you got all the ones here where they've, uh, you know, they, they make crushed blocks of aluminum and, and do it. They got the, uh, the, this is the bottom, the polished bottom bottoms of cans. Wow! And it's all more, it's mortared in. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, let me pull this. That one looks up. like cob to me. People have gotten very creative. Yeah, yeah so I like, like different yeah. colored glass bottles in there, wine bottles, different colored yeah. ones. But um, I'm trying to find the, you know, let's see, the glass. Let me see here. Uh, G L A glass. Uh. The, Mary, Beth, uh, Mary Beth, some of those grow lights can actually put off some heat. They yeah. give you some um, some benefits if you have an enclosed space. Um, you know, make sure that it's not a wide open space. But if you can somehow enclose it with cardboard and and aluminum foil or plastic or something to be able to hold in mm. a little bit and have yeah. the grow light put out a little heat, that should help you all. With Beautiful, eh? Look at this. This is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah you got all, all these glass jars for the walls. Nice. And, uh, you know, everything's, you know, uh, Very unique. order and, uh, and jars. Um, wow. Yeah, that, you know, this has been around. I mean, I remember uh, Mother Earth News back in the, in the um, 70s had, had some pictures of some of, some of these things that people were building. Uh, you know the houses out of out of jars and stuff, but uh, here here's a, a good one saying where you know they just you know use the cob or the uh, uh, mortar to uh, to do it. And what's interesting, um, there's a process that a company used to work for in California that um, um, really brought it to the forefront in construction. And got it approved by just about every county in California wow. called soil cement. You just take the soil there, and you uh, you know got to get it, you know a little test that on it and figure out how much uh, Portland cement powder you have to add to it to make concrete. Yeah, and um, they were using it. They were just at, making a four sack mix of soil cement to go around the irrigation pipes in modesto california well i took wow. a step further at my house in california the cement in the backyard you'll see on the video tomorrow they really don't talk about it much but the cement in the backyard is soil cement that i made with the soil on site and i had my mixer and i just added i just did the uh the, by weight and did the uh made soil cement for my patio in the back that my wife has plants growing on and stuff your place is amazing in California, and your wife, I think, is the amazing green thumb there. I'm <laughs> sure of it. Yeah, she, she, she kicked me out of the garden. Smart lady. Over <laughs> <laughs> we got married. So I forgot all the stuff my mom was teaching me. And then she oh, went yeah. over and had my mom teach her all the stuff that my mom had been teaching me. <laughs> Sounds like you're saying your wife's mean to you. No, it's, 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 it's like, hey, that's what kept mama happy. Fine, that's what kept mama happy, but Poppy here forgot a lot of crap. <laughs> yeah, the place looked fantastic. I loved it. I like right. looking at new places. Yeah. Sort of go ahead, Kathy. Okay, thank you, Kathy, for coming. You're Great welcome. seeing you, Kathy. You too. Thanks for asking me. I appreciate it. All right. I, I knew you would have some good information for us. Oh, I don't Always. know. Always. All right. Mm. Thanks. Bye bye, you guys. Thank All you. Right. Mm. 
Yeah, so, I mean, this is, you know, you know, like I said, you know, the main purpose for everyone that's come in late and didn't catch why the main, main purpose was, this was for people like Dave at Southern Ohio Prepping, who's in an apartment. He's not allowed to have a lot of, he can have a couple potted plants in there, ornamental potted plants. Well, just because they're vegetables that he can eat doesn't mean they're not ornamental. But he has, all his windows are north, uh, the north. He needs north, to move. He needs yeah. to move. <laughs> he, you know, but, he, but he's, you know, because of his disability and stuff, he's in, you know, that type of you know, government housing. You know, well, up the LED lighting then. Yeah. Some and, uh, yeah. So there's, um, you know, I want to give, you know, guys like uh, Dave here options of, of stuff they can eat and grow. And probably the, like I said, you know, the, uh, the biggest thing is that he can do is the white asparagus and the mushrooms because those require no light at all. In fact, the white asparagus wants to be total light free, just in total darkness. Mm. And so there are probably a couple other plants you can find that will change. Basically, you start with regular green uh, asparagus, pile the straw around it, put black plastic so no light gets to it, and it still grows. But yeah. it, uh, it's, it's white, and it's a little bit different. And um, so I would, I would imagine there's probably some other plants that will do the same thing. Sure. I sure. know... I know, like down in the basement, you know, there uh, where there's no light at all in the one area, I got morning glory trying to come up and grow. Unfortunately, it's not mm. edible. It's That's not edible. Bad news, man. Yeah. Bad news, morning glory. Oh. Yeah. Once it gets a hold somewhere, you're never getting rid of it. Well, I shouldn't say never. I mean, there's plenty of toxins out there that'll kill it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, what my neighbors have done, they, they, they said it's taken them like five, six years of constant tilling and disking. That'll, that, yeah, it doesn't and go it, away. Yeah, it, it, it kill, it, it, the area where they're doing it kills it, whatever's coming up from deep below it. Yeah, you can grow uh, there. It still come, it, yeah, it still tries to come in later on from the sides, but yeah. Yeah, overgrowing, an organic farmer that I, that I, no, down the road he overgrows his 27 acres so that the morning glory can't attach itself yeah he's tilling and disking but it's more of a shallow till and a shallow disking it's yeah. not the traditional deep till or deep disc yeah. so yeah but he's keeping it uh i put up i think 25 videos last year on that guy and all his tricks of the trade, it didn't actually garner a lot of views. And the guy was a super intelligent and growing food. And uh, but I guess it just wasn't the right time of year. It wasn't quite spring or something, you know, because that seems to be the more fervent time to put up a video on growing food. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we covered some good stuff here. Um and like how you're, you know, I can see all those plants growing behind you. <laughs> this is a Dracinia. And yeah. so there's a, uh, you know, there's, a, there are, a, you know, it, it's for some people, it's going to be trial and error, find out what grows and what doesn't. The first uh, thing you do is get some seed, then get some lighting, then get some soil. The seeds okay. first, lighting second, and then their soil is third. You'll grow something, <laughs> but I better let you go there, Gil. It's been a pleasure as always. Hang on one second. I got a question here to answer. Oh, flower, F L O W E R. I'm bringing it up here to uh, someone asked the question here. And so here we go. Boom. There it is. There's, and so parts of it are edible. And so, um, yeah. Parts. Parts parts yeah and so uh before you start just chowing down on the cuckoo flower find out what's edible what's not edible it's like tomatoes you don't eat the leaves on tomato plants <laughs> not for long <laughs> it's an astringent <laughs> not unless yeah. you want to end up, end up feet first yeah nightshades are not kind on your digestion yeah yeah so, yeah but All right, uh, folks. peace out yeah thanks howie for coming in anytime Bill. Yeah. All righty. And so um, let me bring up my list here. Okay. So um, Friday is going to, for the Friday night special, 
Oh, we're going to be talking about natural medicines. What do you know? What do I know? Not enough. I know very little. So I'm going to be relying on everybody out there to feed information from the side chat. And I'll have anybody who wants to come up on next Friday, talk about natural medicines and stuff, herbs, um, whatever on that's natural. Uh, that's what we're going to want to talk about, kind of share that information. And so we'll be seeing you there for that on Friday at 8 o'clock Mountain Time, 10 o'clock Eastern. And so that's what's up for Friday. So as always, everybody, want everyone to stay happy, stay safe, stay prepared, and grow something, all right? All right, take care.